tons of news today, but let's start with this. Is this the RTX Titan for this generation? Well, first of all, it's a very weird looking design. Um, look at the, uh, I mean, first of all, it just looks huge. And then look at the orientation of the display outputs here. It looks like we've got three display port and one HDMI. And so this would indicate this might actually be like a, a vertical mounted board you see inside a huge thing. Like th it's weird looking, okay? And then also we can see the board number down here. It's PG-137. Now, why is that relevant? Well, way back in July, before we actually got the RTX 4090, we had been seeing rumors from our favorite Twitter leakers like Copite7Kimi about The Beast, which was listed as a PG-137 SKU, which again, matches up to the numbers in this picture here. Now, at the time, uh, he didn't say whether this would be a 4090 or a Titan, um, but it did list a full AD102 GPU um, with all 1,800, uh, sorry, 18,000, there we go. I was like, numbers are hard in the morning, guys. Anyway, 18,176 uh, cores. And then this was rumored at 48 gigabytes of VRAM going at 24 gigabits per second, which is faster than what, not just more, but faster than what we saw on the 4090. And with the total board power listed at 800 watts, we ended up getting a 4090 at 24 gigabytes, 21 gigabit per second, 600 watt, you know, board power with an actual 450 watt TDP. Um, so this is not what we got. This is where a lot of those massive rumors were like that we'd be seeing this 800 watt GPU coming from. Is this it? And is it still coming out? Where are we seeing this from all of a sudden? Well, from the appropriately uh, named Twitter handle here at Megasize GPU, <laughs> uh, we're seeing um, the 4090Ti slash Titan Ada name, and then here's some pictures. We get this uh, this little uh, backplate type thingy uh, as well to to go with it, or that's it. You know, that that's that. But it seems like this actually has the cooler behind it. Now. Does this mean anything's actually coming? There didn't seem to be any more info on that exactly. But this came out a couple of days ago. Since then, we've actually had Copite give us another tweet. This is January 29th. So Copite has now tweeted out RTX 4099. Now to be clear, he's not replying to this tweet. So this is not a direct reply to this thing, uh, but he is giving us uh, a new 4090 Ti uh, specs rumor. <laughs> and notice that he's listing PG-136 slash 139 SKU for the board, which does not match PG-137 that we're seeing here, or the PG-137 that he listed back in July for The Beast. Okay, so this would imply this is something different, although this does uh, have the 18,176 FP32 cores, um, 96 uh, megabytes of L2 cache, and then this one would be at 24 gigabit per second, so same speed of memory that we saw rumored here, and 24 gigabytes, so half the memory amount and the same as the 4090 on the actual memory capacity, with the total board power listed at 600 watts, which means that it, again, might be targeting more like 450 watt, that kind of a thing, but able to draw 600 watts. Now, 600 watts would be relevant because that's how much you can pull through one of those 12-pin power connectors. Just make sure you plug it in all the way, right? So, um, as usual, over at videocards.com, I checked, and not only have they reported on this, they have also... Uh, handily put all these stats into a chart for us if you want to see them side by side. And the link to everything will be in the description of this video. And we got a lot of other articles to talk about, so I don't want to uh, spend too much longer here. Um, but basically, here's what's going on. The PG-139 slash 136 that we're seeing in this latest tweet from Copite uh, matches up to the boards that we're seeing for the um, 4090s that we already have. So these are, so basically the 4090 Ti latest rumor from Copite is that it will use the same board with the same maximum power, not necessarily the same default power, but the same maximum power, which would imply a one 16 pin uh, connector, right? Um, as the 4090, whereas the older rumors for the Titan 
uh, had that 137 SKU, which matches up to this new picture that we're seeing from um, Mega Size GPU. So different board number. And again, if that did line up to the old tweets, uh, that could have been targeting, you know, 48 gigabytes. That, in other words, this sounds more like a Titan, right? So Mega Size GPU tweeted this out with 4090 Ti slash Titan. It seems to fit better into what you would expect from a Titan class card if it really came out with the 48 gigabytes of memory, that kind of a thing. Um, and the 4090 Ti would seem like more like just an update to the 4090 using similar board and power, but just getting the extra CUDA cores and the faster memory. Because again, the memory speed on the 4090 is 21 gigabit per second versus the 24 that we're seeing here. Now, are you guys even excited about this? Like, it's kind of cool seeing how far GPUs can get pushed, but a lot of this depends on the price. 4090s are already selling for around $2,000 despite a $1,600 MSRP. So maybe this is designed to be as, you know, as 4090s actually do drop down to their $1,600, maybe we launch the 4090 Ti at that actual $2,000 MSRP, something like that. And then who knows if or when we'd see a Titan. There's no release dates on any of this. None of this is official from uh, NVIDIA, but I thought I'd throw this out there. I know you guys are usually interested. I'm interested, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's a spider crawling up a spider web right there, and I am terrified of, sp anyway. I'm gonna try to finish the video though. Oh, now that makes me nervous. Okay, uh, <laughs> gotta get this done before I go to work. Okay, so we're seeing some tweets from Tom Wasik, who was uh, looking closely at some AMD GPUs going under the knife and reporting seeing, and this, these are the new, uh, new AMD RDNA 3 GPUs, right? And he's saying, uh, like the medical world, need to use some diagnostic tools first, since we have a 7900 XT with only five active MCD sites. Uh, imaging was first. Turns out the sixth site is a blank piece of SI. Uh, C? C? Anyway. And you can visualize the RDL fan out wiring beneath this, that site pretty clearly in IR. But what else can you see? A linear array of spots that look remarkably like the keep out zones on X3D. Meaning, you know how AMD's CPUs have, um, sorry, the spider's distracting me. A AMD's CPUs uh, have the X3D version we got with the 5800X3D and we're expecting to see um, the 7000X3D chips coming out in February. We don't have an exact release date. And that helps the CPU performance a lot, getting that stacked 3D cache. Well, um, what Tom Wasik is saying is that it looks like there's similar, um, uh, you know, similar spots uh, uh, that, that look like what's on the X3D chips on the memory, um, you know, just saying, could they be considering stacking MCD functionality, um, you know, on, on their GPUs? Now, there have been rumors of that. Now, he's one saying that you can actually see the little, like, pinout type things, um, on the GPUs. Now, I don't know what to make of that, if it'll actually happen or not, or if that spider's gonna drop on my head off the ceiling. Uh, but anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there as an interesting tidbit. Also in AMD related news and more CPU sided, um, actually motherboard sided, a lot of us are waiting for AMD motherboards for the 7000 series to get cheaper. And while the prices have been slowly coming down, the most expensive ones are still around $160. Um, however, we're getting this tweet from HKEPC saying there will be two versions of the AMD A620 chip. So the A620 motherboards would be cut back and cheaper than what we're seeing from the uh, B650s, um, saying that there should be a Promontory 21 chip, which will be used at the beginning, and then a new A620 chip, Promontory 22, launching later in the same specifications. Anyway, um, so we would expect this to be cut back a bit. Maybe we have less PCIe Gen 5 support, that kind of stuff, but we'll have to see. Um, but it would be nice to get some cheaper options out there. Now let's switch over to some Intel Arc news. For one thing, um, Linus Tech Tips did his follow-up on switching to Arc GPUs for a month and his experience with that. So if you want an idea of some of the experience of maybe why I haven't been recommending Intel Arc GPUs in my best GPUs to buy list, um, there's still a lot of issues with the software to iron out, that kind of a thing. However, uh, Linus did drop some new information along with just his experiences. He was talking about um, people hating the Arc software, which I, I did a video on trying out my Arc A750 and was, not pleased with the software. The overlay has all sorts of issues. 
Linus basically said that Intel has heard people's feedback and is just gonna kill the um, the uh, the software. I mean, here's a direct quote as reported by videocards.com about uh, the Linus video saying, Intel refused to provide exact timeline or any other detail, but they heard you, Luke. That's Linus talking to Luke, who also tried out the ARC GPUs, uh, and everyone, and they know the overlay sucks. It's going away. We're getting a non-overlay single app that will have everything consolidated into one pane. And when they say single app, that's because some of the functionality of the driver was in like the driver software, but then there was also Intel Arc Control. I can't see the spider anymore, and that's making me even more nervous than when I could see the spider, guys. Hopefully, if you see it in my hair or something, let me know. All right. <laughs> Um, but uh, in this videocards.com article, we're seeing that um, Intel has already provided some early information to reviewers. It was stated by Albert Thomas at Adored TV slash Tom's Hardware uh, that it is not accurate to say the overlay is going away completely. The direct quote being, I am limited in what I can say due to an NDA, but it's not fully accurate to say the overlay is going away. I believe I can say Intel's solution will satisfy both folks who hate the overlay and folks who like it. So. Linus saying they're killing the overlay. Apparently that's not entirely accurate, but they'll be improving it. Now we've also been seeing um, uh, rumors starting out from PC games hardware. And this is the article at um, videocards.com reporting on it because PC games hardware is in German, I believe. Um, but they are saying that they have heard from well-informed circles that Intel is currently preparing a major driver update that's intended to increase a performance across the board. Apparently, one of the undoubtedly existing breaks has been identified and eliminated. Now, a while back, uh, Intel got, uh, this is about a month or so ago now, Intel did a major update that improved their DX9 performance, because one of the main problems with the Intel Arc GPUs was playing older games like DX9 titles. Um, and by just switching to the DXVK translation layer, um, it seemed to improve the performance quite a bit across a lot of games. Now, what's interesting to me about this one is they're saying increasing performance across the board. They're not just saying DX9. Could we be seeing actually some issue with how the GPU just operates in general get fixed uh, through the driver and then just be able to better utilize the GPU just in general across the board, right? That would be super interesting. Uh, they also had an interesting survey of 66 games and how they run on Intel Arc. Uh, most of them seeming to run well, although certain games are reporting some visual corruption like in F1 2021, Half-Life 2 issues, Halo Infinite. Um, you know, so there's definitely some games that still had issues, but a lot of games working well in that report. Now we also, since that originally came out, um, uh, seem to have a, a little bit of an update uh, in their printed version, because PC Games Hardware has a printed magazine with a direct quote saying, as we have heard from well-informed circles, a major driver update is also planned for this February, which should improve performance in all, all APIs. So that's again, doubling down on that across the board being all APIs, not just DX9, and also bring new features. Uh, Intel has already released a few driver updates over the past few months, which primarily addressed, uh, addressed the DX9, all that kind of stuff. But as soon as the Miracle driver appears, you can of course look forward to a test from them. So anyway, uh, really interested in seeing what Intel can bring to the table. Uh, and if, again, it does improve performance across the board, all APIs, that would be fantastic. Uh, and be interesting to see how good Intel Arc can get. But anyway, if you're an Arc fan, maybe you want to build one out of Legos. This was an interesting article uh, from Tom's Hardware. And apparently this info is coming from uh, a live streamed broadcast on the Intel Insiders Community Discord ch channel, highlighting a project with Intel Arc graphics cards and Lego. Um, uh, this The show, a recording of which is now available on Twitch, fe featured Zach Hall, who is an ARC's graphics team marketing exec and LEGO fan. And apparently in his spare time, so he does work for Intel, but in his spare time, he's been trying to make a one-to-one -one life-size model of an ARC A750 out of LEGOs. Now the project is not finished, um, but it seems pretty cool. I mean, I always grew up li liking Legos, so seeing uh, that this project, I, I would like something to actually come of that. But anyway, links in the description if you want more info or to take a look at the live stream. Um, now, this was interesting on the um, RAMD subreddit. 
Uh, we're seeing that Digitech, one of the biggest Swiss online PC components shops, released their GPU and motherboard defect rate for each brand. So some people are wondering about like, you know, um, whether spiders are gonna drop on their heads, but other people are wondering if, <laughs> um, you know, what, what the warranty service would be like from very, various brands. How long does it ca take to resolve the issue? But also, what's the, what's the rate? Now, this is just from one retailer, so you shouldn't read this as necessarily being accurate. And return times might vary by region, right? Um, and this is just one region, right? Swiss retailer. Um, but when you're looking at the, um, how often does a product of this brand uh, in the graphics card category have a defect within the first 24 months. They're seeing Dell actually with a 0% uh, return rate uh, with defects, ASRock doing really well, Gainward doing well. Um, the highest reported rate of returns were AMD at 2%, Sapphire, which is AMD exclusive brand at 2.4%, and XFF, XFX, which is also an AMD exclusive brand at 2.5%. So it does seem to be uh, AMD cards with a little higher return rate, but just in general, you know, um, none of these numbers are just like astronomically high. And when it comes to warranty case duration, it looks like Sapphire, well, they ha had a higher number of returns. Um, their return time, their processing time um, was only three days, which by far beats all of the other options here. Now, again, this could be um, unique to the region, that type of thing. And again, this is at one Swiss online retailer, so you can't read too much into it. Um, but they also did it for motherboards. So if you're interested in the motherboard results, uh, we're seeing uh, ranges from 2.8% uh, of returns within 24 months through MSI, uh, up to Supermicro at 5% and Biostar at 4.6%. And then we're seeing, um, uh, we're seeing the processing time, Biostar at zero days, and ASRock up to 13 days with stuff uh, all, all the way in between. So anyway, thought that was kind of just interesting stats. Again, it'd be cool to see how representative that was at other retailers and whatnot, but I couldn't find any info. Now, this is a follow-up to a story in my last news video where I talked about the Samsung 990 Pro SSDs showing that their health reported as dropping rapidly compared to what you know SSDs should report, including previous Samsung models like the 980 Pro and things like that. Well, it's uh, also being reported on the uh, uh, our hardware subreddit, uh, a user saying that they were able to return it uh, despite being past their 15 day normal return policy because their purchase date was on December 9th. They're past the 15 day return policy, but they were able to return theirs. Theirs was down 2%, so down to 98% um, after only filling 867 gigabytes. Um, and again, uh, they posted some stats here for comparison and all that. Again, link will be in the description if you want more info and you can look at my previous news video if you want more issue, more info on this whole story. Um, now, also a follow-up to something I reported last time, which was uh, right when Forspoken came out, being our first game with uh, direct storage technology, um, there was a an outlet that had shown that the performance of the game, the actual frames per second, were worse when using a fast NVMe drive than they were on a SATA SSD. And Apparently those numbers were taken using Forspoken's in-game benchmark and just running a benchmark counter that kept running during the load screens. So what it seems like actually happened was because the SATA SSD took longer to load, then it was on the load screen longer, which had an uncapped frame rate. And so those were being factored into the total, leading to the SATA SSD reporting a higher frame rate during the benchmark run because it was on the uncapped frame, frame rate load screen longer. And so we're now getting follow-ups from computer base here, for example, saying there's no negative impact from dis, uh, direct storage, by the way, it should also, and also mentioning direct storage is also running on the SATA SSD as well. It should be running on everything. It'll just you know run faster on an NVMe. Um, but again, they're showing that it did not impact the overall frame rate if you just don't run the uh, frame rate counter during the load screens. So that seems to be clearing up that. Also, it looks like Forspoken is um, 
not working on AMD Radeon RX 400 and 500 Polaris GPUs. Like not just runs badly, but just isn't working at all. This seems to come down to the fact that the, um, the game uses uh, FL12-1, which is a, of a level of DirectX 12 features that is not supported by these GPUs. However, some even older GPUs, uh, like Intel, uh, sorry, NVIDIA's GTX 970 and 960, actually do support this feature set so they can run the game. Again, not necessarily run it well, but they can at least run the game. So it looks like AMD's 400 and 500 GPUs just can't do it, as reported by Tech Power up here. Now, in a few other stories, uh, if you're interested in um, an anime-style uh, white GPU, uh, if you live in Asia, you can be looking for a Max Sun GPU, um, and they haven't uh, made a lot of GPUs in the past. They had a 4080, and now they're uh, showing off a 4070 Ti, and that's all they've pretty much made. Anyway, uh, so if you're interested in this style and you live in the Asian uh, Asia region, you might be able to get access to that. It looks like this might be only in Jap uh, China, Japan, or Malaysia, and would be a little bit harder to get elsewhere. However, the parent company of Maxsun has filed with the EEC, so the Eurasian Economic Commission, listings for an RTX 4050 and an RTX 4060. Now, it doesn't really give us any info about that, but I know a lot of people are excited about those coming up soon-ish, hopefully, maybe. I think it's still gonna be quite a while, but we're at least seeing them filed here. And again, it was uh, by the parent company of Maxsun who is making this GPU. So there's an interesting little connection there. Now I saw a Tom's Hardware article benchmarking rather than gaming performance, stable diffusion performance, and showing that the uh, s the new RDNA 3 GPUs from AMD uh, were performing fairly decently, although still not as well as they do in gaming performance relative to the competition uh, from, from NVIDIA. And Intel Arc extremely underperforming with AMD's 6000 series also kind of underperforming. However, when you dive into the details, a lot of the problem uh, here seems to be just finding versions of this program to use that are optimized for the various GPUs. Because if you get one that's optimized for the GPUs, it can perform significantly better than when it's not. Um, they're saying the AMD results are a bit of a mixed bag um, with RDNA 3 performing well, but RDNA 2 seeming rather mediocre, but they're saying that uh, Nod or Node.ai, whose you know, version of this app they're using, uh, let us know they're still working on tuned a model for RDNA 2, which should boost performance quite a bit, potentially doubling it uh, once it's available. And again, uh, Intel Arc GPUs, um, again, I think it's it's more of just a being, the software not being programmed well specifically for the hardware that was available there. We're also seeing reports of the first consumer PCIe Gen 5 5.0 NVMe SSD going on sale in Japan with the two terabyte version for 385 US dollars. Now that includes the um, taxes in Japan. So if you remove taxes, it would be closer to $350. And these going up to 10 gigabytes per second. Um, so that's definitely more expensive than the PCIe Gen 4 drives. Anyway, article here from WCCF Tech, if you're interested, they're claiming you'll be paying uh, 13% more than the current fastest PCIe Gen 4.0 and VMSD, which is the Samsung 990 Pro, which apparently you might want to think carefully about buying because that's the one I was reporting on the health issues with. <laughs> now, Corsair teased their MP700 PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs in a video that is now set to private. <laughs> Although it was reported by overclocked.net uh, before that happened, and theirs again is also going up to speeds of 10,000 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds of 9,500 megabytes per second. And they did get a shot of the drive here before it was, like I said, uh, privated on the video. Now, uh, NVIDIA is launching more DLSS3 support in some games right now, as well as announcing some in some uh, upcoming soon games. So another six games, including Marvel's Midnight Suns and Hitman 3, just got it. 
Um, so DLSS3, remember when you look at the performance graphs they give you, keep in mind that it's not apples to apples. Frame generated frames help the motion fluidity, but they do not help the actual performance of the game. They do not make the game more responsive. They make the game uh, look more fluid in motion. I think that's the best way of putting it. Um, but they're giving us some more performance claims. Anyway, it's nice to have. I've liked it in most games I've tried it in. Um, but just it's, you know, 100 frames per second using DLSS 3 is not the same thing as 100 frames per second not using DLSS 3, if that makes sense. Anyway, getting it in Hit Light, uh, uh, Hitman 3, but also in Dying Light 2, uh, Stay Human DLSS 3 upgrade arrives January 31st. So that should be hitting, that's today, right? Is today the 31st? I don't even know what day it is, guys. There's a spider crawling around above me. That's all I can think about. We need to just like get this video done and deal with that spider. Uh, Deliver Us Mars launches with DLSS 3 and ray tracing on February 2nd. And um, Parish is available fe February 2nd with DLSS 3 and ray tracing as well. Uh, Dakar Desert Rally DLSS 3 update available now already. And Dead Space um, came out with DLSS 2 and ray tracing. They're not mentioning uh, DLSS 3 there and claiming more to come soon. Now, Redfall, a Bethesda exclusive, which means this would probably be a, a Game Pass game, right? Um, anyway, uh, it's getting some minimum PC requirements listed slightly above Deathloops, which was their uh, this developer Arcane's previous game. Uh, the, it's just min specs and doesn't tell us a lot about it. Um, they recommend an SSD. Um, graphics cards at an RX 580 and GTX 1070. And they're saying that you'd want at least six gigabytes of VRAM to run the game and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So these are up a bit, but again, they're not saying what resolution and setting this is. So can't read too much into that. So I'm not gonna do a dedicated video or anything. And if you're like me, uh, you have your fancy gaming hardware and you end up spending most of your time playing games that don't require it, like Hi-Fi Rush, which is one of Steam's top sellers. And um, I tried this out on uh, Game Pass because it's you know free with your Game Pass, you know free if you're paying for Game Pass um, <laughs> over the weekend, and I'm quite enjoying it. Um, and you know previously I was playing Hades, so my 4090 is at least uh, has good energy efficiency when I'm underutilizing it. I hope all of you have an excellent day.